you know you want to. A boom, 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 ba, boom, boom, ba, boom, ba, ba, boom, ba, boom, boom, ba, boom, ba. Maybe. <laughs> come on, come on. Let's see. Let's see if it popped up on our end. Boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, boom, ba, ma, ma, ma. It says we're live. It's so crazy. It says we're live. There we oh, go. Hey. There we are. Now we can see it. Love it. Love it. We're here. We're here, guys. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> Finally. We're super excited, though. It's a great week to be back. It some, is. Some good news coming out. A lot of new shows coming out this week as well. So we're pumped to talk about all of the different things that are happening in Hollywood. Because, you know, if it's going down in Hollywood, we are talking about it. Hell yes. But man, oh man, I'm going to adjust some light real quick, do a little tweak here and there. And uh, yeah, we'll get this thing rocking and rolling here in a second. Love life, love coffee. That's for sure. <laughs> mm, coffee. So, all right. First of all, welcome uh, to all of our loyal followers and all of our loyal listeners. How are you guys this week? It's going to be an amazing show, like uh, Logan said. And welcome to anybody new to the YouTube channel that's watching Uh Hey, want to know what the rundown is? You want to know what you're checking out? Well, if you want to know anything and everything that's happening in Hollywood right now, from the studios, shows, actors, actresses, just you name it, we've got it. We have the most detailed industry news section that you'll ever hear. Everything you need to know, we bring to you. If you're here to check out some celebrity interviews, We've got that. We do some of the best celebrity interviews you will ever find. I guarantee you that. This week, Drew Matthews from She-Hulk. Such a fun interview. You guys are going to love that. Uh, we do top five. We have the amazing top five list. We do all kinds of fun stuff. This week, it's an interesting one. Our top five favorite reality shows. Yes. Oh, that's going to be an interesting one. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. And we tell you who the top star is, the top trending movie, the top trending TV show, because we are all in on IMDb Pro Star Meter. So we drop that. Just It's a little bit of everything, guys and gals. We are the definitive source for Hollywood, exactly. we've got everything you're looking for in a podcast. Some people do this. Some people do that. We do it all. Exactly. And we are happy to have you guys. For sure, man. For sure. It's going to be a great show. Loving it. Uh, I would love if our audacity would stay the fuck up. But it's all good, man. You know, you just got to work with what you got and uh, <laughs> keep moving forward because that's all we can do. That's all we can do. Yeah, no, for sure. We're hoping y'all had a great week, too. I mean, that's what it's all about. We're happy to bring you some entertainment to help you unwind and just catch up with everything that was happening in the entertainment industry. Yeah. But, man, oh, man, I think we're about ready to go rocking and rolling. Um, so we'll do a nice little promo, and then we'll lead right into the show because, you know, it is a podcast, so it's going to be very, very uh, geared towards the vocal side. And we're going to be talking um, – about social media and stuff for the promo, so it's going to be good. It's going to be good. <laughs> so uh, here is your behind the scenes of what a podcast is. <laughs> All right, let's do a promo first and rock and roll. What's up, guys? If you're watching this video right now, that means episode 209 of Inside the Crazy Ant Farm is available right now on all podcast platforms with the one and only Drew Matthews from She-Hulk. Man, yes. oh man, what a great guest. Oh my gosh, this interview is, it's informative, but also hilarious, yes. if that makes any sense. I couldn't stop laughing, maybe because he couldn't stop smiling. He, It's an infectious smile, but he gives us, and oh my gosh, trust me, as much fun as it was talking about She-Hulk, you guys definitely do not want want to miss the story about house of cards his most embarrassing moment that's to worth it right there not to miss the show for exactly man exactly <laughs> but be sure to like and subscribe on all platforms oh my goodness thank god for the weekend Woo! i'm just saying today is definitely necessary because I felt like this week in particular was very long. It so was. I'm happy to finally get here to do the show with y'all and to just sit back and talk about the things we love. Yes, yes. Right now what I'm not loving is this guy's Hoosiers are like giving it to my Wolverines. They are. 
It's kind of weird. I, we weren't expecting no, it last no. week when we saw the matchup. I was like, oh, man, yeah, that's yeah. that's in the bag for you, bro. But no, it's happening, man. I'm can, very surprised. Can you go blue follower and say trap game? Right. Let's hope not. Let's hope not. Let's hope Harbaugh just gets it going. Exactly. But anyway, exactly. yeah, I love doing the show every week. I love talking about what we love, the industry that we love, the industry that we're in, and just everything that's going on. It The best day of the week for sure. For sure. For sure. And we have Drew Matthews on the show today. Yes. He is from from She-Hulk most recently, and so many different other things. I mean, we talk about it a little bit in the interview, but basically everything you've watched, he's been in. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> I mean, he's a great guy, great individual, and you guys are going to love this interview. But that is later on the show. Now, let's get a little crazy. What's up, everybody? Episode 209, Woo! back in action. And yes. you guys know your host with the most, myself, JLo Fantastic, and the one and only Mal. What's up? Guys, before we tease the rest of the show, though, be sure to leave a rating on this podcast, ItCap Podcast. Comment below wherever you're listening or watching and tell us what you think about the show. Leaving a rating actually helps this podcast get seen by more people who enjoy entertainment news or those who are trying to break into the entertainment industry. That's what Crazy Ant Media and ItCat Podcast is all about, helping the up-and-comers yes. break into it and giving them the knowledge the to be in the room where it happens. You can do it. You can do it, man. <laughs> but there's a lot of good stuff going down in the entertainment industry this week. A lot of stuff from Marvel. We got some stuff from, you know, Warner Brothers Discovery and a couple of other places, you oh, yeah. know. Yeah. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. But before we get this thing started, be sure to head over to our website, www.crazyantmedia.com, where you can start rocking the latest and greatest Crazy Ant Media gear. We got shirts. We got hats. We have anything you need for your upcoming holiday season. And be sure to follow us at Crazy Ant Media and at ItCap Podcast on all social media platforms to know when those sales are happening. Yes. Because we want you included in those, and we want you to send us pictures of you rocking that Crazy Ant Media gear because we're here for it, man. We love that interaction. It's great gear. It is. Uh, it's just great gear. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Completely agree. <laughs> but of course, you guys know we're going to have to start off with the juggernaut itself, Disney. Yes. As we told you last week that uh, Jeff Levinus was on board to write Avengers The Kang Dynasty. Following the news of Destin Daniel Creighton, who would direct Kang Dynasty for Marvel Studios, and now both films have locked up their writers following the success of Loki and Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Michael Waldron is set to write yes. Avengers Secret War. Now, a Secret Wars ha will have its own director, though it's assumed all parties will be in touch while the films are in development. But, of course, Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige is producing and overseeing everything, so you know it's all <laughs> going to be linked up. Now, like Kang, the Kang Dynasty, plot details are being kept well under wraps. You know how it is over at Marvel. If you slip up with anything, Black Car is pulling up. And <laughs> I mean, our guest this week, Drew Matthews, he said... A guy slipped up on set and he never saw him again. <laughs> so, I mean, you never know what happened. No, it's true. But what now, though, the, the big thing, oh, my gosh, this blew up at the beginning of the week. Everybody's still talking about it today. And it, it makes, like, all sense why. Because we got to see more and more and more of the upcoming Black Panther Wakanda Forever because it dropped another exciting trailer this week ahead of its November 11th release date. Yeah, November 11th is like right around the corner, y'all. The longer trailer shows a better look at the mysterious new Black Panther who appears to be a woman in a brand new suit. Now, everybody is thinking it's Shuri, but could it be Nakia, Okoye, or someone else taking the mantle they're not giving us any clues yet as to who it actually is there's also some extended looks at namor in his underwater kingdom of atlantis now staying true to the comics namor can also be seen flying with his winged feet that was a pretty badass scene there's also a brief shot of the new hero Ironheart flying in her makeshift iron man inspired armor now as you guys know the sequel will be without st the star of the first film chadwick boseman who tragically died in 2020 from colon cancer the emotional teaser featured glimpses of Wakanda without its King T'Challa with a mural of his likeness uh, shown looking over the streets of the country. Get this, y'all. The teaser attracted 172 million views in the first 24 hours, standing among the largest in the films under the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That does not surprise me. I'm telling you, this could 
be the biggest film for I, I think it might it might unseat Endgame. Yeah, I mean, it my the top three movies of Marvel that make the most money, Endgame, No Way Home, and possibly this one. So yeah. I mean, there's a lot of anticipation, a lot of buildup for this type of content, especially when you know it coincides with real life with everything that was happening with Chadwick yeah. Boseman. So it's going to be very interesting. But the trailers look so badass, and I'm super excited to see it. Hell yeah, super excited. Well, Agatha, Coven of Chaos, the WandaVision spinoff starring Katherine Hahn, has added a familiar face to its lineup. Emilia Claudefield will reprise her role as Dottie, the yes. neighbor to Elizabeth Olsen's Wanda that some audiences theorize would be the big bad of WandaVision. The series eventually revealed that the uh, neighbor Agnes, who's played by Han, uh, was pulling the strings when she was unveiled as the powerful witch, Agna Harkness. Now, Coven of Chaos is one of the half dozen, dozen series Marvel has on the calendar over the next few years, including, like we told you about before in the past, Secret Invasion, Echo, Ironheart, and Season 2 of Loki. And so, Daredevil Born Again. Uh, so <laughs> many things, man. So excited. A lot of good stuff happening. Ooh, I can't believe we, uh, like, you gotta say that one, because that's the only one everybody's exactly. talking about. Oh, okay, so that's all the good news right it, it, marvel studios is definitely the juggernaut within the juggernaut of the mouse right but they also own other studios 20th century studios being one of them and it's not so good news for them yeah looks like the mouse is going to take a bath on this one amsterdam isn't generating the fire that the a-list cast was hoping for and is actually bombing in its debut aiming to finish in third place y'all mm. get this the film earned just 2.6 million dollars from 3,005 theaters on friday and now it's only looking to open at seven million dollars for the whole weekend 80 million dollar budget on this <laughs> thing guys it's gonna open with seven million dollars Oh, yeah, that's yeah. rough, man. I mean, with that money that you're putting in, what that that's absolutely insane. And I, we were talking about it off air. It just doesn't seem like the typical, you know, moviegoers type of movie. Yeah. I mean, it looks like movie of film for a film buff. Yeah, no, honest. yeah, no, that's true. It, it is very quirky and odd. And like, you got to be a fan. Yeah, I feel it's not like they didn't market this film. They did. I mean, do. you've been seeing yeah. commercials freaking everywhere and the stars have been out there promoting the hell out of it. Oh, um, in fact, we'll we'll have one on soon. But yeah, so I just I don't know. I think you're right. I think it's just one of those that just won't catch with an audience. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Maybe it has a second life in a streamer. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Kevin Dundred is set to join 20th Century's Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, starring Owen Teague, uh, Farrah Allen and Peter Malkin. Wes Ball is on board to direct this thing. Now, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes uh, starts an all-new chapter in the Apes saga, picking up many years after the conclusion of the 2017's War for the Planet of the Apes. Yes. We're hearing that Dundred will be playing an ape um, and that the character is likely to be the villain in the new film. So we'll keep you posted on anything that comes up from under those wraps. But, you know, that stuff's really sealed over there at Disney. Oh, for sure. For sure. I like that, though. We're yeah. Get an ape villain, like, yeah. You know, and is Caesar still around? Like you know, exactly. we, we know. Justin Wong, you know him, you love him. He's been cast as a series regular in Goosebumps, Disney Plus's live action series based on, of course, the R.L. Stein best selling books. Now, Goosebumps combines teen comedy with horror, action adventure, mystery, and psychological thrill. The series follows a group of five high schoolers who unleash supernatural forces upon their town and must all work together, thanks to and in spite of their friendships, rival and pasts with each other in order to save it, learning much about their own parents' teenage secrets in the process. Mm. Long will play Nathan Bratt, the new school teacher who develops a terrifying connection to a decades-old supernatural murder. That so, sounds interesting. Yeah, I like Justin Long. I've always been a fan. He's kind of one of those guys who just, you know, you love to watch and things, so I'm excited. Agreed. I feel like the supernatural genre is making a nice little resurgence, yeah, for too, sure. to be honest. Um, well, this one is very interesting, and I wonder what happened here. We'll find out, I guess. Keanu Reeves has exited Hulu's limited series, The Devil in the White City. Oh. Now, the limited series tells the story of Daniel H. Burnham, a demanding but visionary architect who races to make his mark on history with the 1893 Chicago's World Fair. And D. 
are Dr. H.H. H. Holmes, America's first modern serial killer, and the man behind the notorious Myrtle Castle, Murder Castle, built in the Fair Shadow. This was uh, Mark Reeves' first major U.S. television role. The eight-episode series is targeted for a 2024 launch with production not expecting could to convince until next year so mm. maybe it's just probably scheduling things keanos has a nice little resurgence recently so right. that would make sense but this one has been like on everybody's radar recently so i'm kind of surprised yeah. that that happened so. maybe the nice resurgence he just decided he doesn't want to be on tv <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i don't, I don't like, know <laughs> listen listen <laughs> listen guys the film thing's picking up again uh i don't know i'm good oh this one it just only makes sense after you add reba to the cast you're bound to get more country right so musical artist lyle lovett and darius rucker hootie himself don't call me hootie <laughs> has been tapped to guest star in an upcoming episode of abc's Big Sky. Love it will play Tex, an expert tracker with a quiet menace hidden beneath a courteous gentleman cowboy exterior. Like a snake charmer, his grit for music makes him all the more deadly. Rucker will portray Possum, a hired gun who works at night like his nocturnal namesake and Tex's partner, for better or worse, on this particular job. Mm. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, for The sure. two of them just even together as, as like a team is interesting enough. Then you got to throw in Jensen and, and Reba in the gang. It, that That's going to be an interesting episode. Yeah, for sure, man. I wonder if somebody's going to rock his wagon wheel, though. I mean, that's going to be very interesting. <laughs> well, I love it so quirky, though. Any acting that he's ever done, he's just, he's a very odd man. Yeah. And so it, it's <laughs> It's just going to be good. For man. sure. Well, heading over to Fox, more than two decades after The Animal was released, Rob Schneider comedy movie is getting a sequel on Fox's AVOD platform, Tubi. Schneider is back in Wilbur Price, a starring role as Marvin Mange, a police evidence clerk whose behaviors changed after he got animal parts transplanted following a crit critical injury. He also co-wrote the script, produces, and will direct the sequel, whose green light hinges on Fox's finalization uh, deal with the studio behind the original film, Revolution. Now, in keeping with the theme of the film, the official logline for the sequel, tentatively titled The Animal 2, <laughs> as it follows Marvin Mange and now old dog who needs to learn new tricks as he hunts down a new uber animal with powers far beyond his own. So uh, that's very interesting. I always remember the freaking the poster for the, I never yeah, saw it, but yeah. I remember the poster of him like peeking out with whatever the fuck on his face. But <laughs> yeah, I, I have you seen this one? I is, have. Is it, it's what? just one of those ridiculously over the top campy, just like how did this get made type yeah. movies? Um, I don't think we need a sequel, you know, um, uh, hopefully straight to Tubi. That makes sense. I mean, that hopefully revolution sense. says we don't need a sequel either. And just something can't work. Right. Out. I, mean, exactly. I, I don't know. Fox is also doubling down on Crepopolis. The network has handed an early renewal to Dan Harmon's animated series ahead of its full launch next year. The move comes at least six months before it's set to premiere as part of four show, two hour animated block on Monday nights from May 2023. The show will launch with a preview on November 27th and the network will bridge the gap between November and May with a series of digital content drops as well as blockchain business designed to carry into the summer block on Monday nights where it will be joined by Grimsburg, a comedy about a misanthropic detective. That's the one with John Hamm, I think, wow. is doing the voice or whatever. So I would say, I mean, look, one thing that you can't argue about Fox, right, is they have animation down to a science. They I do. mean, The Simpsons has been on since before all of us were fucking born practically yeah i mean they they, they know how to do it so exactly go for it, it's man. gonna be very interesting it's gonna be very interesting well heading over to warner brothers discovery mark Petowitz is stepping down as chairman and ceo of the cw after 11 and a half years at the helm of the broadcast network one of the longest tenures ever in that network's history now, the move comes as local TV giant Nexstar Media Group is taking over the CW yep. uh, with its acquisition of 75% stake in the 16-year-old broadcast operation. Now completed, he will be replaced by Nexstar board member Dennis Miller, who is named president, confirming new owner's intention to 
take the CW in a different direction. Sure. And next are signaled potential changes at the time of the August 15 acquisition announcement when its toppers said that the CW would be shifting towards border and cheaper programming, including acquired off network shows with the goal to make the network profitable by 2025. Now, Peter Witt's exit is effective immediately, and the represented, repres, respected veteran TV executive will be reviving his Pine Street Entertainment Company, which was producing uh, for under at uh, HBO or Warner Brothers Television when, in the spring of 2011, he was appointed uh, president of CW, which is going to be very interesting because if you think about the CW, you think a lot of... Uh, darker shows a lot of superhero shows so and going in a di different direction i wonder how all of that is going to be i don't know i'm hoping for the best one thing that did kind of come out with like a little glimmer of light for anybody that was worried apparently the new owners next are uh they seem to be a fan they came out recently and said they are a fan of Superman and Lois and Gotham Knights and a couple of the shows that are doing well on the network. So hopefully that means they're not going to go away from that and that they're going to keep those. But I think even if they do like them and they do do, I still think like we've talked about on previous shows, the smart move would just be to move any of the CW superhero shows over to HBO Max just and sense. just let them thrive. I mean, you know, that, uh, that just seems to be a win-win for everybody. Yeah. Cause I mean, they can still rebound and balance that out with everything with Walker and now your Walker spinoff. And then you also have the Winchesters come in and possibly other things happening with that. So, and Kung Fu and a whole bunch of other yeah. different types of shows that you can do. Um, but yeah, it's just going to be very interesting to keep up with all that stuff. Yeah. You, you want this one? I know you want this one. Because oh, for this sure. is your big thing. Why not? <laughs> HBO has renewed Ryan Condal's overall deal. Condal was originally signed into an overall deal with HBO back in 2020 on the heels of House of the Dragon, receiving a straight-to-series order with a co-created drama with Martin, who served as the writer and executive producer, as well as co-showrunner on the first season. Now, Condal was named sole showrunner for season two, and I'm super excited about it because a lot of these things are dropping off or adding on in the background, but it really hasn't affected the show at all. It's still badass incest man. yeah and it We're only makes it. sense they gave him an, a new deal because i mean the success of the yeah, show is i mean massive, who doesn't so. love incest i mean <laughs> come on come on I, i'm just saying hey you know speaking of quirky <laughs> sex hbo max is harley quinn is getting her very own valentine's day special harley quinn a very problematic valentine's day special is set to premiere in february of 2023 on hbo max now per the log line it will feature harley and ivy celebrating their very first valentine's day together as a couple while also revealing how the rest of the ragtag crew spends their gushiest mushiest most romantic day of the year that's gonna be fucking hilarious i, agree. I mean the way they've been just going all in on harley and ivy it, i can't even imagine what the valentine's gonna exactly be like. for sure and the dude prequel series at hbo max from legendary television has cast Emily Watson oh. and Shirley Henderson in lead roles. Now officially titled Dune, the sisterhood, <laughs> the series was ordered at HBO max back in June of 2019. The show is set 10,000 years before the events of Dune and is based on the novel sisterhood of Dune by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. Now per the log line, the show follows a Harkowin sisters as they combat forces that threaten the future of humankind <gasps> and establish a fabled sect known as the Bean Gesserit. Now, Watson will play Vala Harkin and uh, Henderson will play Tula Harkin. So all the good things happen, man. Yeah. I mean, that seems to be a very cult following and it's like slowly but surely coming into pop culture now so we'll see how that yeah. goes and it took a long time for that one to get greenlit and develop i mean 2019 i mean shit okay. yeah right That's all right all right are you ready i knew it this guy knew it you knew it yeah come on. everybody knew it james gunn all the people that have ever worked on it everybody but now it's official velma she's a lesbian 
Clips from the brand new movie Trick or Treat Scooby-Doo would show Mystery Inc. member googly-eyed and speechless when encountering costume designer Coco Diablo have gone viral on Twitter, confirming suspicions held by the Scooby-Doo fan base for literally decades. It's long been an open secret among fans and Scooby-Doo creatives that Velma is gay. Even James Gunn, who wrote the early live-action films, and Tony Servone, who served as supervising producer on the Mystery Incorporated series, have confirmed the character sexuality but they were never able before this point to make it official on screen now fresh off the viral news that velma is officially a lesbian in the latest scooby-doo movie the mystery inc member is also getting more love in mindy kaling's upcoming adult animated series at hbo max according to the logline the series tells the origin story of velma dinkley the unsung and underappreciated brings of the scooby-doo mystery inc gang the original and humorous spin unmasks the complex and colorful past of one of america America's most beloved mystery solvers. The 10 episode first season of HBO Max's Velma will debut in 2023. I'm excited about that. And it's a lot of good representation there. I mean, of course, they're trying to up their game because, you know, Disney's all on top of representation. Sure. So I love that they're able to go back to some of their historical characters and bring that aspect into it, or at least answer some questions that a lot of people have always been assuming. So it's nice. Yeah. And now that she's out, will Mindy Kaling put a lot more of that in there. I, yeah, I'm sure at first it wasn't like you, she wasn't allowed. Yeah. But now that it's, hey, just go for it. Exactly. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. <laughs> well, HBO Max has given a eight episode straight to series order to how to be a bookie. Oh. Now, the first comedy for the streamer of one of eight, Warner Brothers Television's top showrunners, Chuck Lore, co-executive and executive producer of HBO Max's most watched off network series, The Big Bang Theory. Now, actor comedian Sebastian Manifusco uh, from The Irishman is set to star in the single camera com or single camera series, which Lore is co-writing with one of his closest associates over the past decades, Nick Bacay. Mm. Now, the Lore's first sale since uh, the start of the pandemic in How to Be a Bookie, a veteran bookie who's played by uh, Manny Costco, uh, <laughs> struggles to survive the impending legalization of sports gambling, increasing unstable clients, family, and co-workers, and a lifestyle that bounces him around every corner in Los Angeles, both high and low. So that's a very interesting premise, and it's kind of now a precedent because a lot of states are allowing sports betting. So yeah, on a lot of that under best friends, Marcus, Dave, and Sarah in their early twenties, who all work at the same terrible startup and all fucking hate boss. The official log line says the trio needs to start. And Marcus, the leader of the crew believes the only way to do so is to quit their awful job. However, before Marcus gets his chance, his boss fires him first. Now he really fucking hates him. Levy created the series and also serves as executive producer at Showburner. So how many people have not been in this situation where they have a fucking hate and they hate their boss and they don't want to be there? And I mean, this should be a pretty funny shit. Oh, completely. And I mean, Levy has been killing it recently. Oh, for so sure. So really excited to see. Now heading over to Paramount, the I Network had a very good Friday night in the ratings wars. Now that 9 p.m. slot series premiere of Fire Country on CBS was the ratings winner. Now it draw in about 5.74 million viewers and beating out its competitors by more than 3 million. Yeah. That is impressive showing that uh, Fire Country made the number one series this season. Now, CBS is, has now uh, the top three new series of the season of uh, the Fire Country and East New York and So Help Me Todd. So they're definitely winning when it comes to television. So kudos yes. to them. Yes. Killing it. Who's ready for more eggs and ham? Huh? I am. I know you guys are the long in the works Frasier follow up is finally a reality, guys and gals. Paramount Plus has given a series green light to the multi-camera comedy executive produced by Frasier himself, Kelsey Grammer, who is reprising his signature character, of course, psychiatrist-turned-radio host, Frasier Crane. Grammer, in 2018, started fielding interest for a new Frasier series that would feature the title character in a new city and has been the driving force behind the efforts ever since. The project was announced as being in development at the streamer in February of 2021 at their launch event that year. The number of episodes has not been confirmed, but sources say will likely be 
10. Details about the new series are also not being revealed beyond the fact that it is focused on Frazier Crane's next chapter in a different city. You guys remember at the end of the series, he moved. Uh, he will be surrounded by new characters with original Frazier cast members not expected to be series regulars, but could and probably most likely will make guest appearances. So uh, I'm so freaking pumped about it. I can't even tell you. Yeah, I was right? a huge fan of Frasier. I so. mean, it's definitely one of those like Seinfeld friends and Frasier. Those are like the three, I feel like from the early 2000s, late 90s that are the oh, definitions yes. of, you know, sitcom comedies and all the good stuff. I'm actually kind of surprised because we've been talking about this one for, I feel like over a year, yeah, yeah. over two years, and it's actually coming out of the woodwork and gonna happen. I didn't think we were ever going to see the light of day. I but know. I'm happy to see it. Well, and for everybody freaking out and worried about the original cast members not all coming back guys remember Frasier itself was a spinoff yeah from cheers they took a character moved him to a different city surrounded him with a new cast and boom <laughs> so i think it's gonna be okay <laughs> for sure for sure well paramount plus has also greenlit a docuseries titled the change makers oh. now featuring the stories of the eight oh ordinary people fighting for a better world airing next year the eight episode show will feature a different type of storyline per episode focusing on grassroots activists facing challenges across the globe now stories will range from black mothers in the u.s fighting uh, the effects of systematic racism and indigenous people in ecuador protecting their land from deforestation and the show is part of paramount's content for change initiative which aims to uh, contra or contract racism, bias, stereotypes, and hate on and off screen through three pillars, one of which is focused on systematically transforming the creative supply chain. I love this, though, because like we say all the time, Entertainment is the best way to educate. So this is a great way to do it. Yeah. And I love highlighting ordinary people making a difference in the world. Exactly. That's fantastic. I, I freaking love it. Way to go, Paramount. Paramount Plus has set a January 2023 premiere date for its upcoming original series, Wolfpack. The streamer also released the official teaser trailer during the show's panel Friday at New York Comic-Con. Wolfpack will debut Thursday, January 26th, the same day as its Teen Wolf the movie exclusive exclusively on the service in us and Canada. And then the next day on Paramount plus in the UK, Australia and Latin America. Yeah. They announced both of those at the same time. They had the cast out there and everything. Not a whole lot came on out of New York comic con. We were kind of surprised by that, but there's some big news right there for you. So yeah, exactly. NBC universal. It's a fairy tale ending for universal pictures, which emerged from a heated auction to win fairy tale mm. and an adaptation of the new Stephen King bestseller that Paul Greensgrass will adapt and direct. Now the studio and streamers were all over this one since sources revealed that Greengrass would direct this one key to the deal making at universal is a strong relationship with Greengrass has at the studio and the universal filmed entertainment group chairman, Donna Langley. Yeah, now, Green, makes sense. Greengrass directed the Borton films in Untitled 93 and most recently Tom Hanks star News of the World at the studio. Now, Fairy Tale follows a 17 year old boy who inherits a keys to a terrifying world where good and evil are at war. And stakes could not be any higher as journeys into a mythic roots of human storytelling. Mm. Very interesting. A lot of different stuff happening there. Stephen King, man. He knows how to write them, and Hollywood knows how to turn them into movies. That <laughs> is for sure, man. That's for sure. Uh, so we talked a lot about this one finally being greenlit last week, and now we're, we're finding out more cast members. Nicholas Holt is in negotiations to join the ensemble of Robert Eggers' next picks, Nosferatu, uh, which Focus Features is producing. Bill Skarsgård is attached, of course, to play the title character, with Lily Rose Depp, as we told you last week, also in talks to star. Now, Eggers is directing and penning the script so that i mean everybody loves that character he's been used in so many different things so I, i'm excited for that one. Oh yeah for sure for sure and i mean decades we're talking decades <laughs> after nintendo's largely walked away from hollywood following the infamous 1993 live action yeah. super mario brothers film well the video game company is returning to the big screen the first trailer for the animated Super Mario Brothers movie dropped uh, to fanfare during the Nintendo Direct presentation earlier this week. Now, Chris Pratt, like we told you before, is voicing 
Mario, and Charlie Day is Luigi. Anya Taylor Joy as Princess Peach, Jack Black as Bowser, Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong, and Keegan <laughs> Michael Key as Toad. Super Mario Brothers opens April 7th of 2023 with Universal distributing globally. I'm very excited about it. I haven't gotten a chance to watch the trailer yet, but I mean, those people playing those characters, I feel like it's sounds really good oh for sure and you know everybody's been dogging chris pratt's voice and everything all like that so in the trailer he literally says two lines the yeah. whole trailer he says two lines so i guess they're keeping that voice under wraps you for, know, sure, kind of thing. for sure uh chris messina has been tapped to star opposite kaylee cuoco in peacock's dark comedic thriller based on a true story now inspired by bizarre true event based on a true story is about a realtor a plumber and a former tennis star whose lives unexpectedly collide exposing america's obsession with true crime murder and the slow, cool, closed toilet seat. Uh, I, I'm not kidding. Messina will play Nathan, the washed-up tennis star husband of realtor Ava, played by Kaylee Cuoco. So that sounds interesting. Yeah, it really does, I man. didn't know we had an obsession with slow, slow, closed toilet seats, but hey. Yeah, I have no words for that one. I have no <laughs> words for that one. Just don't take a dump on our lives. That's right. Um, Raya Perlman, Chelsea Frey, and Ronan Banchart are the latest to join the cast of Peacock's Poker Face. A mystery drama series starring Latasha Leon details on their roles as well as plot details of the anthology like series are being kept well under wraps. We just wanted to let you know a little bit about it. Yeah. And again, I'm just going to say what we've said on past shows, but if they don't use Gaga's poker face as a theme song for that show, Epic fail. Epic fail. <laughs> Jennifer Hiller's novel Little Secrets is being adapted for the small screen. The thriller is in the works for Peacock from Tish Cyrus. Yes, that Tish Cyrus, Myra's mama. Uh, Hopetown Entertainment. Writer Melissa Scrivener Love and Universal Television. Now, Little Secrets is a female-driven mystery thriller that pays homage to the erotic thriller genre of the late 80s and early 90s. The series follows a desperate mother's mission for revenge against her husband's mistress after her child goes missing. Totally alternating perspectives between the mother and the mistress. The story dissects themes of lust, obsession, grief, and loss. Mm. Okay, that sounds interesting. It really does. I mean, I was, I'm in. I wasn't expecting all that. No, okay. I mean, hey. Okay. Exactly. Will no. Miley star? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> are, I mean, just so many things there are. Are they my heart, my achy, breaky heart? <laughs> like, well, really... clearly that happened. The mistress got busted. And exactly, I mean, like... exactly. <laughs> well, heading over to Sony, Sony's Pictures has put together its filmmaking team for El Marito. Just stop. <laughs> the first uh, Marvel superhero movie headlined by a Latino character. According to superstar Bad Bunny, who recently made his film debut in Sony's Bullet Train, will star in this project okay. with uh, Jonas Curran. Uh, signed up to direct, and Gareth Dunet Alcor from Blue Beetle will be writing the script, and it's in early development. As is the case uh, with all of Sony's Marvel films, El Morato, a.k.a. Juan Carlos Escrita Sanchez, originated in Spider-Man comic universe as an adversary to the web slinger. Uh, like Venom, Morbius, and the upcoming Craven the Hunter, with Aaron Taylor Johnson, El Marito will be an anti-hero story focusing on the son of the luchador who stands in to inherit the power of the El Marito. Of the El Marito. So a lot of good things happening, but I, you just can never trust the Sony verse. No, like, I'm sorry. Just I, my 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 advice to Sony: stop making Marvel movies. Yeah, you just, just you can't do it unless you're going to bring Kevin Feige in to help you on every one of them, like you did the original Venom. It's just pointless. They're all going to bomb for you. Yeah, just, just give them, them back. Yeah, just 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 give, just, just give them back. The cast for Sony's R-rated Jennifer Lawrence comedy No Hard Feelings continues to expand with Natalie Morales and Scott McArthur. Joining Joining the cast of the Gene Stupinski directed movie. The pick, which is currently shooting, follows Lawrence as a ne'er do well who is hired by a rich couple to befriend their socially awkward kid. Mm. Now, Andrew Barth of Disney Plus fame, uh, he's uh, gonna play the kid. His parents are played by Matthew Broderick and Laura Benanti. So that's gonna be pretty funny, I think. No yeah, doubt about for it. For sure, for sure. Well, Lionsgate has just dated three theatrical releases for this year. The Sebastian Malacosco inspired biopic about my father starring the comedian and Robert De Niro for Memorial Day weekend, May 26th. The untitled Adele Lim Khan 
comedy on June 23rd and the Expendables 4. Everybody's fucking has walkers and shit for it, September 22nd. Now, About My Father will open up against Disney's The Little Mermaid uh. on the four-day holiday weekend next year. The film centers around Sebastian, who is encouraged by his fiance to bring his immigrant uh, headdresser, Father Salvio, to a weekend get-together with, their, with her super-rich and exceedingly eccentric family. Now, that's going to be very interesting. And Anders Holm, Brett Deere, and David Risch are also going to be in this one. Um, the weekend develops into uh, what can be only described as a culture clash, mm. leaving Sebastian and Saval uh, to discover that the great thing about family is every, or the big, great thing about family is everything is about the family. <laughs> the, uh, the Adele Lim Ranchi comedy will open against Warner Brothers DC's The Flash on its new date. The fourth Expendables dates itself against the untitled DC movie in September 2020 or September 22nd. The film sees the return of Sylvester Stallone's <coughs> uh, 50 uh, plus 50 Cent and Megan Fox join the mercenary team, which also includes Jason Statham, Dolph Lundgren, and uh, Randy Kortor, uh, Tony Ja, Aiko Isis, Jacob Scrito, Levi Tran, and Andy Garcia. So many different people there. Right. Armed with every weapon they can get their hands on and skills to use them, the Expendables are the world's last line of defense and the team that gets called when all other options are off the table. But new team members with new styles and tactics are going to give new blood a whole new meaning. So there it is, man. I'm surprised they're making another one of these. Uh, me too. And look, look, here's the deal. I'm just going to make some predictions. Uh, the, the De Niro film opening against Little Mermaid, it's going to get its ass handed to it. There's no way you beat the Little Mermaid at the box office. That's just not yes. going to happen. Smart move by the untitled comedy because that's opening against Flash. And I don't think that's going to do as well as Warner Brothers wants it to do. So you have a chance opening against that one. This third one, The Expendables. What's I, I, we don't know what that DC movie will be, but likely it's not going to be the Flash, and we know, so it'll do well, and that means this one, the Expendables, will probably get its ass kicked. But, exactly. Hey, I'm just order to the drama The Venary of Samantha Bird, starring Catherine Langford, finally. I mean, gosh, I loved her on 13 Reasons Why. It's nice to see her in something now. She's going to be in the title role. Created by Anna Moriarty, the eight-episode series revolves around Langford's Samantha Bird, who, while visiting family in New England, Samantha reconnects with her childhood sweetheart and falls headlong into a seemingly perfect storybook romance. But underneath their fever dream lurks a more unsettling interpretation of this affair. The series is described as a haunting portrayal of addictive love and the repercussions that a relationship has on the families in a small New England town. Mm. Oh, so it can't just be a happy love story. Can't do it, man. Catherine Langford just can't be in a happy story. No, like, oh. exactly. Give her a rom-com, man. She deserves <laughs> some happiness in her life. It's Everything is so dark I'm in her saying, stories. Like, come on. Just saying. Well, Amazon and MGM's The Ten, The Rings of Power, not the Ten Ring, Shang Chi, <laughs> um, has already started filming its next season, which is good because spent a lot of money on it. Yes. Production got underway Monday at the new hub at uh, Bray Studios, just outside of London. The news follows the first official Nielsen rating being released Thursday for Prime Video Series, showing the Rings of Power top the streaming charts for its debut week with one point minutes viewed the first season of the show was new zealand over an epic stretch of 18 months during the pandemic this are economical and is also where the company is establishing a multi-show hub now the rings of power is event and a preliminary episode of its debut season this week the show chronicles author J.R.R. Tolkien's fabled second age as a group of desperate heroes gradually come together to fight the return of the darkness to Middle Earth. The production has also announced that a new character, oh. uh, a Cryad, who has not been cast yet, will be the old one of the oldest and wisest of the elves. 
would be joining this ensemble. So that's going to be very interesting. Like, Gandalf, yeah, you shall not pass. <laughs> so there it is. It makes sense that they're trying to cheapen this thing up. I mean, they spent a quarter of a billion dollars on two seasons, so it just kind of makes sense. Bezos is like, guys, guys, can yeah. we, can we figure this it. out? I love it. It's great. It's doing well, but let come on. Let's ring that oh, in. Uh, <laughs> Till death do us part is the haunting overtone of director Jason Moore's upcoming feature, Shotgun Wedding, which combines the thriller romance and comedy genres into 100 minutes of action-packed content prime video dropped the trailer on this week to promote the film ahead of its anticipated international premiere on january 27th co-starring grammy nominated singer jennifer lopez and actor josh dumel who took the place of douchebag army hammer as an engaged couple the two are about to get married when the entire wedding party is taken hostage by criminals the couple must then overcome the bumps in their relationship to save their friends and family now teasing as the mixture of steve and bloodshed to come. The newly distur- uh, distributed trailer includes a fleeting glimpse of, are you ready, ladies? Singer actor Lenny Kravitz shirtless. Mm. <gasps> Shotgun wearing will be available for streaming in over 86 countries and territories upon its release. Now, that's how you draw a female audience to your trailer. Exactly. Just put Lenny shirtless. I mean, exactly. That's so <laughs> funny. But well, MGM Snoop Dogg's sports comedy, The Underdogs, had added Tika Sumter, Mike Epps, oh. Andrew Schultz, and George Lopez while casting the kid team of actors, which includes a uh, giant booth, Aiden James Carrillo, uh, Kyla Davida, uh, Caleb Dixon, Alexander Michael Gordon, and uh, Shamori Washington. Billed as the bad news bears in the world of youth football, the <laughs> underdog tells the story of Jason Jennings, uh, two J's, uh, played by Snoop Dogg, a former NFL star who, after a run in with the law, agrees to coach a youth football teams in lieu of prison in the hopes of relaunching his flitting, flooding career. Production is underway for an October 20, uh, 20th. 2023 theatrical release so that'll be very interesting yeah i'm excited for that one i think it's gonna be good yeah all right jumping over to netflix now i guess this is finally a definitive move that proves that the theater chains now recognize netflix as a movie studio because forever they fought like no they're not they're not a movie studio they're a streamer we hate them blah 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 well in a first amc regal and Cinemark theaters have all agreed to play Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery, in what's being billed as a special one-week sneak preview before the pick hits the streaming service a month later. Now, the three largest theater chains in the U.S. have all agreed to play the film for one week over Thanksgiving, a month before the highly anticipated movie comes out. The Ryan Johnson-directed sequel will open in approximately 600 cinemas. In addition to AMC theaters, Cinemark's theaters, and Regal, the film will play an additional locations in the U.S. and overseas. The movie's theatrical run is scheduled for November 23rd through the 29th and is part of a campaign to further eventize the film. This makes sense because the theaters are needing films because they're not doing as well as they want to be. This is a big film that was a theatrical film, but now going to be a streamer film. So, I mean, this is a win-win all the way around. I agree because I feel like a lot of people were talking about the first one. So to be able to work with Netflix on the sequels, I feel like that's a good a good economic and viable decision. For sure. Just saying. Theo Rossi has joined the Netflix and Ablin trailer Carry On, opposite of Jason Bateman, Taron Edgerton, and Sophia Carson. Now, the pick centers around Ethan Kopik, a young TSA agent who gets blackmailed by a mysterious traveler to let a dangerous package slipped through security and onto a christmas day flight wasn't me now tj fixman penned the first draft of the screenplay with michael green doing most of the recent polishing dave clark or dylan clark will produce uh, the film marks the first production to come out of the overall deal with amblin uh signed back in june um uh, so you know i mean things can be a slow moving process so yeah. it's good to just uh start to put things out uh yeah i totally agree hey have you watched this one yet a lot of people have apparently uh i haven't gotten all the way through it yet it's difficult to watch i'm of course talking about ryan murphy's jeffrey dahmer series monster it's breaking new records in its second week on the netflix top 10 chart the series has become netflix's ninth most popular english language tv show of all time, Netflix measures overall popularity by counting hours viewed in the title's first 28 days on the streamer. Now, after just 
12 days alone, Monster has been viewed for 496.1 million hours and still has 16 more days to climb even higher on the chart. According to Netflix's figures, at least 56 million households have consumed all 10 episodes, mm. which is in total about 8.8 .8 hours of the limited series thus far. Now, this is the Evan Peters-led series, second week as number one on the English language TV chart. Between September 26th and October 2nd, it was viewed 299.84 million hours, making it the second most watched English language series in a week ever. Ever. Stranger Four, uh, season four of Stranger Things is the only Netflix title to beat Monster in that regard, which makes sense because that's not nearly as difficult to watch as this one. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. This one's hard to watch, y'all. It is. I got for the first, I got through the first five episodes all in one sitting, and then I was like, oh my god, I have to do something yeah. else. And then now it's gotten to the point where like, I don't want to sit down for all that again. No, so it's, it's just, it is very difficult. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know why we're all obsessed with this shit. <laughs> like, that's the real question. Why are we obsessed with murder? But in a good way, I guess. I don't who know. <laughs> uh, Firefly Lane is coming to an end. The second season of the Netflix series starring Katherine Heigl and Sarah Chalk will be its last. The Aww. streaming service announced that a sophomore season will consist of 16 episodes who will be split into two parts. Netflix really likes to do this. They really shit right do. Now. Uh, the first nine episodes will be released on December 2nd and the final seven dropping next year. Ben Lawson, Bue Garrett, Ali Sabai, uh, Joan Kurt, Roan Curtis, and Yul Yerman are set to return and four new cast members are joining. India Dill Beaufort as Charlotte, Greg Gurman as Benedict, Jolene Purdy as Justine, and Agnico Sharicho uh, as Danny. The show, which premiered in February of 2021, follows the lives of childhood best friends Tully Hart, Kate McCarlicky, and uh, while Tully is a popular talk show host, Kate is going through a divorce from Johnny Ryan, Tully's producer. Um, in the season finale, Kate and Tolly are not speaking, and uh, the reason behind that rift has never been revealed. Additionally, Johnny was caught in a major explosion in, in Iraq after becoming a war reporter. Mm. That show just seems like a lot. <laughs> There's yeah. a lot happening, so hopefully while you're watching the show, it's able to connect all the dots hopefully yeah uh, right I mean, and if you if it doesn't well you're not going to get any more chances exactly <laughs> all right jump into apple in a move that nobody saw coming i don't think anybody was expecting to see this one to see the blah, blah, blah. let me start that again no one was expecting this one to see the light of day anytime soon but apple original films has dated the run from slavery thriller emancipation for december 2nd for its theatrical opening followed by a december 9th release on apple tv plus this follows, of course, the film's first showing in D.C. with star Will Smith and director Antoine Fuqua. Now, who they discussed the fact-based film in a screening orchestrated by Apple and the NAACP during the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation's legislative conference. Now, there had been much speculation, as I said, as Apple and its filmmakers plotted just what to do with the film, whose status as an award season frontrunner changed the moment Smith slapped presenter Chris Rock during the last Oscars. But apparently they have decided to move forward with it. They are going to drop it in December, making it a prime Oscars contender. That's going to be really interesting because if it's a solid performance from Will and it's Oscar worthy and he gets nominated, the man can't even show up to win. Yeah. He can win, but he can't show up to accept yeah. it. Like that's going to be interesting, right? Like, it is. I don't, I don't think the Academy would let that happen. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think, oh man, it's so interesting, but we will have a guest on from the, or from that film to talk about it. So stay tuned for that. Yeah. Uh, Apple and a 24 have dropped a first look at Jennifer Lawrence upcoming big screen return opposite of Brian Trey Henry as two people bonded by trauma in Causeway. Now, directed by first-time feature director Lydia, oh shit, uh, Nyg. Well, Let's go with Nuenbar. No, 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 no Nogbauer. Nogbauer. <laughs> Uh, the <laughs> film features Oscar winner Lawrence as Lindsay, a military engineer who has returned to the States from Afghanistan with a debilitating brain injury. 
Henry plays James, a stranger who offers her a ride home and is also suppressing his own past trauma. The two begin to seek out each other's company as they provide solace, uh, solace uh, to each other on their journey to recovery. The movie will play in theaters and globally on Apple TV November 4th. I watched this trailer. Uh, it's pretty intense. There's not a lot of dialogue in it, 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 but it's pretty intense. And I have hope for this one because the accents weren't god awful. Mm. You know, I mean, so many times when it's set in the South or in New Orleans or where that just I couldn't even watch the Katrina thing. You know, it was so bad. But this wasn't too bad. They both did OK. And I, I have hope for this one. For sure. So I'm excited. Anders Holm has signed on for a major recurring role in Apple TV's upcoming live action Godzilla and the Titans series based on Legendary's, of course, Monsterverse franchise from Legendary Television. Following the thunderous battle between Godzilla and the Titans that left Leveled sorry, uh, San Francisco and the shocking new reality that monsters are real. The untitled MonsterVerse series will explore one family's journey to uncover its buried secrets and a legacy linking them to the secret organization known as Monarch. Now, Holmes' role, like the others, is of course being kept under wraps. Now, would that be mummy wraps? Because it's the monster versus night. Uh, who knows, man? <laughs> so much happening. But guys, <laughs> there is your industry news for this week. We're super happy you stuck around for all the craziness that was happening down in Hollywood. And yeah. You know, we've got you covered here on It Cap Podcast. But now it's time for our guest, Drew Matthews, to come on the show and talk about his latest role in She-Hulk. And man, he also has got a good story about Paul Giamatti and working with him and a whole bunch of other things. This guy is a really genuine human being, so I'm excited for you guys to hear this. Yeah, you know, he goes into great detail about so much stuff for all you up-and-comers that you really need to listen to. And by far has one of the most entertaining, most embarrassing moment stories that we've ever heard involving House of Cards. You guys are going to love this. For one. sure, man. For sure. Well, here he is. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, be <laughs> sure to head over to his interview after the rest of the show because it is available right now live on our YouTube channel, Crazy Ant Media, and Drew Matthews, actor from She-Hulk, and so many other things. So be sure to check that out. He's a really good interview. Hell yeah. Um, but now let's dive back in for the top five segment. All right, now it is time for the top five segment. And man, oh man, this week it is top five reality shows. Oh my goodness, it I had know. to happen. It, it had, had to happen. happen. <laughs> At some point in time, it was there. But man, for me, this one goes back to childhood memories, watching like the actual original Japan version, which was always very entertaining because you had no idea what they were saying, but you always can tell like obviously people's inf uh, inflections and their excitement and things. So anytime they would get really excited, I would just be like, yeah, but I'm talking about Ninja Warrior, the original Ninja Warrior. I just thought that one was so freaking cool seeing all of these different, you know, athletic people some of them firefighters some of them like just everyday school teachers different things like that going through crazy ass obstacle courses and like figuring out a way to become the next ninja warrior and it's just such a cool like thing especially to get active and fit and people are making businesses here now in the states that are kind of like ninja warrior based where yeah. there's like an obstacle course and you can pay to go through it and shit which is so smart kudos for people who made that up but it was so entertaining to watch and it gets my adrenaline pumping so of course that's why i had to put it on my list number five ninja warrior there you go my number five i feel like there is no reality tv show list without this one because i feel like Almost everything spawned off of the success of this one, even if it wasn't music related. And I'm, of course, talking about American Idol. I mean, come on. It's the Mac Daddy original uh, reality show singing competition and launched so many freaking careers, you know. Uh, mostly the, the, <laughs> the most successful people coming off the show didn't win. But two winners are, of course, massively huge. Kelly Clarkson and uh, Carrie Underwood. But then so many of the runners up or whatever have massive careers. I mean, Jennifer Hudson freaking oscar winner she, she what she's one away from the ego or like it's just and simon told her she'd never make it i mean come on this show it, it in its heyday it it's not in my opinion as great as it was it's just kind of lost some of its flair but in its heyday with its original cast and and what it what it, it was freaking phenomenal and it was a massive huge everybody had to watch it every week and families would gather around kind of a thing so it's hard not to put this one on the list my number 5 american idol 
Oh yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Number four for me, um, there, this guy's got a lot of different shows happening in the wilderness. I'm talking about Bear Grylls. Uh, he's got a lot of different stuff, but the one that I particularly like and watching the most is running wild with Bear Grylls because that's when he brings the celebrities on and makes them go through what he goes through and like makes them spend the night in the wilderness and just all the different things. And you get to see a real human side of these celebrities and these actors, because I think that's also very important. That's why we like doing the show. So you can see the human side of these people and we don't have to put them up on a pedestal because they're just everyday human beings. Um, but yeah, I think that's very interesting look at you know their fears and their not fears that's why we like watching hot ones because you get to get that you know the persona the wall drops and they're able to be themselves and i think this show does that brilliantly so that's why number four for me is running wild with bear grills there you go that's a good one that's mm -hmm. a great one my number four we were talking about it on on this podcast like several times over the last couple of years where it was coming back and then it's just kind of fallen to the wayside and we haven't heard much about it anymore. And I don't know if it's dead in the water or what, but I'm talking Project Greenlight. Uh, what a phenomenal reality show this was. Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, and Chris Moore. And basically this is, there was a contest. You would submit your script and, and you would go through this series of things where it was judged. And then if you won... You got to make your movie with a million dollar budget. Chris Moore and Ben Affleck and Matt Damon would produce and be involved in every aspect of it. And it was basically, if you've never made a movie before kind of a thing, this was your opportunity to be on the set of a movie, be in the production office of a movie and see how it's made from start to finish and how you have to try to pull everything together from casting to your budget, to locations, to studio approval, to like all these different things. And it was such a phenomenal inside look at the industry and how a movie is made. And um, it, it was a stark reality, I think, for so many of these people that competed in this this contest and inevitably became the, became the winner and butting heads with no, but this isn't my vision. And this is what I want. And the reality of how the system actually works. And, um, it ran for several seasons and it was outstanding. Gave us look Shia LaBeouf, one of Shia LaBeouf's very early, the battle of Shaker Heights films. He was a participant in this project, the project green light and his movie, Amy smart was in that. Um, and, uh, foggy from daredevil, just, um, so many people that, that this, this show launched, um, I wish it I wish it does come back because it's a phenomenal phenomenal look at I can't even speak I need more coffee a phenomenal look at the reality of filmmaking and while it is film and it's glamorous and it's Hollywood and it's stars and it's all that it is not easy. It can be a nightmare sometimes. And it is, it, it, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of talent, and a lot of patience to be a filmmaker. And this show really highlighted that. And I hope they really do bring it back so that people can see what it takes to make a film. It definitely inspired me even more. So when I was early on wanting to be a filmmaker to go, Holy shit, this is like, this is intense. Is this what it's going to be? And so, so yeah, it was it's a great choice. Great choice. Number three for me goes to Fear Factor. Oh. I know a lot of people are like, 